This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship this morning, October 18th. A few announcements. There will be no Tuesday morning Bible study. Wednesday at 6.30 we will have a Koran and English Bible study. So Robin will be helping us get through Psalm 90. On Saturday at 1 o'clock there will be a council meeting. That Zoom meeting will be at 1 o'clock. Sunday at 10.30, there will be Sunday school with Anne Hoffleen. I would encourage you to join us on Zoom. She will be looking at the book of Romans. If you want to prepare, it will be the first 17 verses of Romans. The family ties should come out next week. In this edition, there will be information about the world mission offering. There will also be a report about the Karen leaders' COVID meeting. Last Saturday, there were uh, 11 different churches represented. And we had reports from doctors and from the Minnesota Department of Health. There have been 600 reported cases among the Karen. There were probably at least three times that many because many go unrecorded. The hundred Karen people have been hospitalized. And we know that at least 11 or 12 have died of COVID. It was a very helpful meeting that we had with the leaders. And you will be able to read about that in this upcoming family times. Again, I'd like to encourage you to join us for Sunday School on Zoom. You will be receiving a, a, a link to click on. Blessings and peace to you all. Amen.
Please join us in singing, Open the Eyes of My Heart, and Say the Word. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you, I am lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Glory. 
and gentleness that we may be pliant in your hands. We would listen for your voice and we praise you with grateful hearts. Breathing life of all, we hunger for you. We thirst for the purity of heart. Awaken us to all that is holy, to the sacred, that our lives may be a reflection of you. For we love you and in our hearts we will to do your will. Breath of the merciful, teach us the way of compassion. May we heed the cries of the poor. May we be merciful to those who live in the bonds of illness and loneliness. May we be strong voices in support of justice for all people. And may we offer the forgiveness, forgiveness as a balm of healing. We pray for Sheila as she tends to her father. We pray for all the members of our congregation who are grieving, for those who are ill, and for those who are tending to those who are ill. Your teaching is a joy to our hearts, O Lord of our lives. May we walk with faith all the days of our life, confident in your living presence, even in times of trouble, and with assurance for what is and all that is to be. May we have faith that you are there, that you are present, and that your love is always available to us. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who, who came to us to show us the way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline ตินิยายสวัสดีทัศน์สุขิตัมดาจอพลาราเพคิมุชิสุดเตชิเตสุดสิกิดิเลกิสิเตนิลาคิมุชิสุดเตชิเตสุดสิกิดิเลกิสิ
ดิเดกะตีญาณาเลยกะบาบลุบาพุลเลนะเมญาตะกีดอกวาสุมุเลกวาตะกะเลยมีนะปวะวะมุตะกีดอสิเวดายะเมกะเลตะโดนะเลย
And finally he says, no, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Now go, lead my people up to the place I have promised, and my angel will go before you. God is saying, you will get what you want, but you won't have me, because you are a stiff-necked people, and I might destroy you on the way. But Moses, never giving up, continues to pester God. Exodus 33, verses 12 to 14. Moses said to the Lord, It's true that you have told me to lead these people to the land, but you did not tell me whom you would send with me. You have said that you know me well and are pleased with me. Now, if you are, tell me your plans, so that I may serve you and continue to please you. Remember also that you have chosen this nation to be your own. The Lord said, I will go with you, and I will give you victory. Even after God changes his mind, Moses presses him. He needs to know that God will accompany not only him, but all of the people. Eugene Peterson paraphrases Exodus 33, 15 to 17 this way. If your presence doesn't take the lead here, call this whole trip off. How else will it be known that you're with me in this and with the people? Are you traveling with us or not? How else will we know that we're special? I and your people, among all the people on this planet. Moses was telling God, Lord, the one thing we need, the only thing we need right now, the thing that will make us unique in this sinful world, is your presence with us. And God said to Moses, All right, just as you say, this also will I do, for I know you well, and you are special to me. I know you by name. Moses had needed to be absolutely certain that God was with him, that God's presence would always be alongside him. If he had the hymn, I Need Thee Every Hour, I'm sure he would have sung it. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. To which God might have replied with the hymn, How Firm a Foundation. Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand, upheld by thy gracious, omnipotent hand. But then Moses makes the most outrageous request of all, Exodus 33, 18 to 23. Please, let me see the dazzling light of your presence. The Lord answered, I will make all my splendor pass before you, and in your presence I will pronounce my sacred name. I am the Lord, and I show compassion and pity on those I choose. I will not lead, let you see my face, because no one can see me and stay alive. But here is a place beside where I can stand on a rock. And when the dazzling light of my presence passes by, I will put you in an opening in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And then I will take my hand away and you will see my back, but not my face. God would continue to be with them as they travel. The tabernacle, or it's called the tent of meeting, was always erected at the edge of the camp, where the, wherever the people went. And during all their wanderings, they could see the cloud of the Lord's presence over the tent during the day, and the fire burning above it at night. Years and years later, when God's chosen people had not sensed the presence of God for a long time, God again revealed his glory in an unexpected way. The Gospel of John described it this way, the Word became a human being, and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received from the Father's only Son. 
The disciples experienced the glory of God as Moses had. They had discovered the glory of God in Christ as Jesus threatened, as Jesus silenced the threatening winds and the waves on the Sea of Galilee. They saw the glory of the sun revealed on the Mount of Transfiguration. They were witnesses of the glory of God as Jesus stood among them in the upper room following his death and his resurrection. They too needed a sense of God's presence with them. And God revealed who God was through Jesus Christ in that glory. Jesus is the final word that God is present with us, that God knows us by name, and that God goes alongside us, and that God loves us no matter what. I was reminded of a song, a hymn by Fanny Crosby. Fanny Crosby wrote thousands of poems that were often incorporated into hymns. She was the first woman whose voice was heard publicly in the Senate chamber in Washington, D.C., as she read one of her poems. Now, the amazing thing about Fanny, besides writing all the poems, was that Fanny, from infancy, was blind. She became a teacher at a school for the blind, and she said this about her blindness. If I had not been blind, I might not have received such a good education, nor developed so fine a memory. She memorized by heart the first four books of the Old Testament and the, first, and the four Gospels when she was ten years old. Though her physical eye could see nothing, she had spiritually keen eyes. She said, if I had a choice, I would still choose to remain blind, for when I die, the first face I will ever see will be the face of my blessed Savior. How remarkable that she should write a hymn that talks about seeing the glory of God, and that she would write the words, to a wonderful Savior is Jesus our Lord. It is, it is inspiring, and it is inspired by our text today. Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depth of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord he taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up, and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. Moses knew that he could not lead the people without God's presence, guiding and leading. He was persistent. Over and over again, he pleaded with God to show me your presence. May we sense and know God's loving presence and power as we believe and our faith in Christ grows. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for the gift of your presence alongside us. You have offered us your Holy Spirit in order that we may not be afraid, in order that we may know that you are near, that you have not left us, nor forsaken us. 
Thank you for the perseverance of Moses. Help us to be so intent upon you and your presence with us that we pray that you be here and that we are aware, awake, alert to your presence in all the parts of our lives, in all that we do and say in this world. Thank you, Lord. And now may the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship, companionship, and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit be and abide in you now and forever. Amen, and go in peace.